Welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we're going to be working the top down shaw. It's a free pattern available on RedHeart.com. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous shaw. This is so simple. But Red Heart lets me be honest and I'm going to tell you that the directions that you see on the website are very intimidating to look at. But they're very simple. They're really so simple. You just have to take step by step. So my goal for showing you how to do this shaw is that I'm going to show you how to bypass the stuff that makes it look difficult. Because once you get beyond this little section right here, you can see that the rest of it is all very the same stitch. It's just a matter of getting beyond this little section here. And once I do that, you are going to love love this shawl. So on my particular version that I did I decided to substitute and I used a Red Heart Boutique Sachet and I just what I just did is I just slip stitched it into the final. So instead of the final border as indicated on the pattern I just slip stitched every one just like so. So I just missed three loops on the sachet and just secured it in and you can see that that is really quite fabulous. I also decided to make another one and this is called Red Heart Boutique Changes and the yarn is changing all of these fabulous transitions on its own and this is really remarkable just like so. And again it's about taking the mystery out of this beginning section right here. Once you get beyond this beginning section right here the rest of this pattern is again so very very simple. So don't let the pattern online fool you to thinking that it's tougher than it is. There's just a lot of reading and sometimes you think you're not doing it right when you in fact are. So I'm going to show you some cheating techniques as well just in case you lose count at any point of these rows because there's an easy way to correct that without having to frog all of your work. So let's get started today. I'm using a size J or a six millimeter crochet hook and just for the fun of it I'm going to be using Red Heart Changes Red and and uh, you can see I kind of got it all rolled up like so. But you can see that the yarn is changing forever and ever inside of this ball. So let's uh, begin and we're going to start off with row number one. So here's your pattern here. We're just going to work our ways down from one to all the way to seven. And essentially once you get seven to 48 we're just going to keep repeating five and six back and forth. And it's this section of row one to four that I'm going to demystify in order to show you tips on making it very easy. So you're thinking five and six you're going to be having to count stitches all across when you see this pattern. Essentially you don't really have to because I'm going to show you some tips and techniques in order to avoid that. And if you make a mistake at any point I'm going to show you how to cheat, how to cheat as well or to give you permission to cheat if you have to. You'll see the four double crochet, five double cr crochet here. Those are clusters. Those are only on the border itself so you don't need to worry about those until the very end if you wish. I substituted mine with a Red Heart Boutique Sachet at the very end. Uh, that's something that can be a choice for you as well. So let's get started on working on this pattern together. To get started I'm just going to create a slip knot. And I'm following through my directions so I have them off screen on the side on my iPad if you wish to print it out that's up to you. So we have chain three. So we want to not count this as one so chain three. So one, two and three. And it says to slip stitch in the first chain to create a ring. So we just come back to the first chain, grab the yarn and pull it through. So we now have a circle. So this is the very center of your back and this is Shaw is working from the top down. So let's begin row number one. So here's where all the reading comes into fact. So let me read it to you. Chain six and then in brackets it says count as double crochet and then chain three and then comma double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain three, double crochet all into the ring and turn. <laughs> oh I love directions and this fun. This is so simple though. Okay so stick with me here. <laughs> so let's chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. <laughs> Sorry. So what we have here is that this counts as a double crochet. So the first three counts as a double crochet and then the next three chains okay counted as chain three. Okay. So essentially what's happening is that this piece is going up and turning sideways. <laughs> I'm sorry I don't know why I'm laughing. So now we have to double crochet. So I'm just going to pinch down and come into the ring and I want to double crochet. Okay, so let's pay attention here. I want to chain one and I want to double crochet into this again. So see how I'm taking it step by step. So I'm going to stop you here. So this here is the very edge of 
your border. So this goes across your shoulders. This here is the start of the point when you see that point going down the center of the back. This here is the point. That's what you're looking at here. And now it says two chain three. So one, two, and three. Okay. So just think of it like it's the other side of this and now we double crochet. So if you can see this is how it is. So there essentially is the center of your back. There's the one angle going off, the one angle going off and then this is the center that's hanging down the center of your back. If I turn it like this it might be better for you. So if you can visualize that that's great. So let's move along to row number two. So let's turn our work. Okay. So this is what it will look like at this point. Okay. So it says row number two. Chain four. Count as double crochet. Chain one here and throughout. Double crochet in the first stitch. Four double crochets in the next. Chain three space. Then double crochet in the next double crochet. <laughs> okay. So let's go back. There's so much more to that but let's go back. So let, we're going to go one, two, three, four. So we're going to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. So what it's telling you is that this chaining of four exists every time you start a row. This chaining of four. Okay. So this counts as a double crochet in one chain. So if you can get that it's great. So that's what it means by chain our double crochet chain one here and throughout. So we're going to double crochet into the first stitch. We're just going to come right down to where you started and double crochet and that is going to exist in every row. So we're just going to double crochet. Okay. Now it says to four double crochets into the next chaining of three space. So this is the chaining of three space right here. It's before the corner and it's right here. So it's four double crochets in. So essentially I'm going to just essentially what's happening is on, on here is that in this pattern you have what appears to be train tracks and then a solid row and then train tracks. And so then this here is the solid row that you can see. So if you look at the um, at the shot you will see a solid row. This is what it is. So now what we have here is that we got chain our uh, four double crochets into the next chain three uh, chain three space. Double crochet into the next double crochet. So we're going to double crochet into the first side of the point. Okay. And now we're going to double crochet again. Uh, double crochet chain three double crochet into the next chain one space. The chain one space is always the center of your shawl. So double crochet in and then chain one, double crochet in again. So essentially we are just moving that point up to the next level. So here's the point, here's the point. So this is the back of your, your back going down your back. And so essentially we have to repeat exactly what we just did on the other side. So what we have here is that we're going to do one double crochet okay into the next double crochet that we have. And then what we're going to just do is just like we did before with the four double crochets into the chain three space. This is the chain three space right here. So we're going to do four double crochets into that space. Okay. So now it says to we're not quite done yet. So into the next chain three space double crochet chain one double cro crochet into the chain third space. So essentially you can count backwards. So one, two, three. You can go that way and that is your third and you're just going to double crochet and I will uh, into that chaining and then chain one double crochet into the very same one that you just did. Okay. So why did we do that? Essentially on this side remember how we started off and we just did chaining of four. Well that counts as a double crochet chaining one and then we double crocheted immediately into the same one below. So on this side what's happening is that you've double crocheted into the chaining three space, chain one, then double crocheted. So essentially you're doing the same. It just looks like it's different when it comes to looking at the directions to do that. So let's move along to row number three. So for row number three we're just going to turn our work. So I'm going to try to explain this as easy as I can. So this last row that we just did was the solid row. So this is the train track row, uh, row that we're doing at this particular point. So to start off with we are simply just going to chain four. So two, three and four. And this counts as a double crochet in one chain. 
So we simply just come down, see how that the one below that they were into the same stitch here? It's like a V stitch. Well you wanna create that V stitch every time you're starting a row. So we're just gonna double crochet down into that gapping space right into the V just like so. So this V becomes the same V all along throughout the duration and it will exist on the other side as well. We now want to chain one just like so and coming down into the very first double crochet that you run into and we're just gonna do another double crochet in. So now we to work our way across it says to repeat it so, so many so let me just simplify it for you. We're gonna chain one. We're gonna come back down on this row and we're gonna skip the first stitch go to the second for one double crochet. Chain one. We look back down, we skip the next one, go to the next stitch over. And you keep doing that until you get to the center point. Chain one, skip the next stitch and essentially do you see how that these two are in the beginning? Your last stitch is gonna be on the very uh, front one of that, okay? So do you see how So you keep going across the row and essentially you see the center point just like so. It's coming down into the center like there. So we want to maintain that. If you've done your stitch counting right and you've chained one, your very last one will be the very first of the V for a double crochet. Just like so. So now we chain one again and we create the V stitch right here. So we're going to double crochet into the same gap in, right in between the middle. We chain one and we come back down into that same gap. So this is the very center of your back. We now want to chain one and we come back down into the very next double crochet just like we ended in the first double crochet. We finalize that one and essentially we chain one, skip the next one here and we want to do the same thing going down this side. So we chain one skip the next one, go to the second, chain one and essentially when you skip the last stitch that you will run into is the first of the V for here. Like so. Chain one and we want to create the V stitch just like we did over here. Okay so the V stitch is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. I'm, it doesn't say that in the pattern but that's kind of what it is. So we create that right in the edge. So one double crochet in, chain one, one double crochet into the final and voila you basically have that complete. So that was row number three. So let's begin row number four and we're just going to turn our work. So this is what it kind of looks like at this point. And in row number four, very simple. So we're just going to chain three or chain four. So one, two, three and four. And remember what I said is that we have to maintain this V right at the very beginning of all of it. So we're just going to double crochet right into the V or right into that space between the two. So we keep maintaining that all the way through and now we simply just start on the very first one right there and we're going to double crochet. And now we go into the gapping space right in between and double crochet. So we go into the next double crochet. So essentially this is our solid row all over again isn't it? So we go into the next gapping space and we do that all the way across till we get to the center point. So one into the gap, one into the double crochet all the way across. So gap. So essentially in this particular shawl is that you have a, a row that is a little more labor intensive than the other. Like so. So now we're just looking for that V shape which is right there. So I'm just going to keep going and filling that in until I get to the V shape. And my yarn is about to transition. So here's the V. So I want to get into the last, uh, to the first V just like we did before. Okay. So now we're into the center and we're going to create double crochet, chain one, double crochet to maintain that center point and the yarn just transitioned. So now essentially we work down the other side and essentially every double crochet gets a double crochet and every gap gets a double crochet all the way to the end. 
I love this changes yarn by Red Heart Boutique. It's, oh, it's really fabulous. You're thinking at the time, oh my god, it just doesn't look right. But when it all comes together in a project, it's uh, it's it's really quite brilliant. I love this stuff. I flipped out at a show when I saw this for the first time, and I'm still flipping out about it. I think it's brilliant. So here we go. Keep going all the way down. So essentially, what I'm doing here is going to exist on all the rows coming forward. So every time we have a solid row basically what we're doing. So now I'm into the last stitch here. This is chain one. Remember double crochet chain one and then the final. So we just make sure that we do the same thing. So we're just matching it to the double crochet. This is the V shape. So we put in one double crochet, chain one and one double crochet right into the end to finalize the row. So that would be what you're project looks like at this point. So if it's hanging off your back, this is the very top. This is the center of your sh uh, back just like so. So let's move along to row number five. Row number five, we're just going to turn our work again so, and let's get ready again. So every time we start off, we're going to, so row, row number five and six are going to be identical. So we're always going to chain four to start and we're just going to fill in the V shape like we did before. So just double crochet into the first gapping space to keep that V going down the edge. We simply just chain one and on the very first one here we're just going to do a double crochet. And just like we did, see how you have a like gapping down here? We're creating that same look but we're now a little bit bigger so you have more stitches. So this is the thing. You just keep working your way on this. Every time you go past a row it gets bigger and bigger. So you just chain one in between. You skip the next stitch below. Go to the second over for a double crochet. Chain one. Skip the next stitch. Go to the second over. Skip. Second over. Double crochet. And you keep doing that all the way. So what happens is if you run out of stitches and you've miscounted. At the very end, uh, that's happened to me a couple of times. Well maybe more than a couple. Uh, where I've just kind of maybe I've skipped a stitch because I didn't see my, my stitches that clearly. So what happens is that maybe I will have ended prematurely. I just throw in an extra stitch if I have to in order to keep it balanced. So in this case, for example, let's say I ended here. Okay. And I said, well, okay, well, I'm really not on the final one here because I should have ended there. I will have chained one and then gone into that one. Yeah, it adds an extra stitch, but you know, as a as as you're working through the shawl as a whole, you won't even notice it. So that is kind of uh, cheating. Hopefully, Red Heart lets me keep that in a video. <laughs> but you know, it's all about knowing where you can cheat and where you can't. So I'm just gonna just back out, and so it's basically double crochet, chain one, double crochet. I'm in the V shape. So just before I start the V, I want to chain one first, and then double crochet, chain one double crochet in and now I want to work down the other side. So I chain one first going into the very first this side of the V shape and then chain one and okay, go to the second over. Chain one, second over. Chain one, second over. So you could make this for a child size if you really wanted to. You just didn't have to grow it as big as well. So you can see how simple this is getting as we go along. So it's just the very beginning directions of this pattern that make it really look uh, complicated but it is not. So for example, here we go. So I got one and two. So I got my very final before the V shape at the end. So make sure you chain one before doing it and then double crochet into this gapping space. Chain one double crochet in. So let's move along to row number six and this will be the final repeat pattern. So it's uh, this this row plus the next is your repeat all the way through out your project. So let's turn our work and go on to row number six. Row number six is just like the solid rows just like you've seen below and we're just going to do it one more time. So we just automatically just start by chaining four. One, two, three, four. Coming into this first gap space we do a double crochet in. Then we uh, immediately double crochet into the very next one. I almost did a chain one there. Okay, so double crochet into the next one and just like we did before, every gap is going to have a double crochet. Every double crochet is going to have its own double crochet over top. So we're soliding, we're soliding, we're making it more solid 
as we go along. So this really is a no-brainer when it comes to this row at all for counting anything. You just fill in the gaps with double crochets. Just be mindful of where your center point is in order for you not to lose balance. And the yarn is about to transition again into something different. So I love about this yarn. So we're just keep going till you get to the center. There it is there. So you can see it's a slightly different yarn than what we've already been using. Okay, so we're now at the center point. You can see that the V is there. So we immediately come into the next one, first V first, and then we come into the center, chain one, and center. And then we work down the other side. So the first side of the other side of the V is going to get one before you start that, and then the gap. And then the next double crochet. So it's like yin and yang. What you do on one side, you do it on the other in order to keep it in balance. So I'm actually working on a red one off camera as well for uh, my own purposes for a show. I've done it already in Unforgettable as you probably saw in the beginning of this tutorial and I'm doing one in red because I think it looks sexy. So it's nice to have your own color choices and what you think works for you. So if you don't like the colors that you see in the pattern you can always substitute for whatever you feel is, suits your personality better. So we keep going until we get to the first one. Okay and then we fill it in with the double crochet and then we start Go right into the gap, the final gap, chain one and double crochet in. So at this point you are going to be working on all the rows from 7 to 48. Now you should know that uh, row number 50 relies on you to be finished uh, finishing number 5. So this is 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6. So the last row that you should do before starting your trim will be this train tracking look. So off camera I'm going to do that really quickly and then I'm going to show you how to do your border for when you get to that level as well. So uh, join me in just a second. So to start off your border you will finish at the point that you will have a train track looks. So that will be your final row. So if you have a solid row as your final you can't do it. So you have to make sure you finish so that you have the train track. So let's begin and you will notice in the beginning instructions that it says uh, four double cl uh, clusters, five double clusters and so this is where the special abbreviations uh, come into play. So let's uh, begin. We're simply just going to chain up three. So one, one, two and three and it says four double clo uh, cr double crochet clusters in the first chain one space. Okay so let's uh, begin to do that the four double cl uh, clusters. So this is the only time the four double cl uh, cluster appears in this pattern is right here. So we're just going in, grabbing the yarn and then pull through. And so if you look at the instructions it says yarn over, insert hook in a space blah 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 and it says that you will have a total of five loops on your hook. So essentially we're just going to keep grabbing the yarn and just wrapping okay and going through okay just like so and you want to keep doing that until you get a total of five uh, loops on your hook. As soon as you get your five, okay, you're just going to grab the yarn and pull through all five. So essentially this chaining here actually counts as the fifth for the cluster. That's why it only appears that's four double crochet cluster at this point. So it's just the way of getting started. So let's go and it says to then chain three. So we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. It says to do a pico and if you look in the special instructions it says pico is chain three slip stitch in the third chain from the hook. So I'm just going to pinch right underneath right here because that's where my pico is going to go. So one, two and three 
and it's where I'm pinching is the one right above it. Okay, grab the yarn, pull through and through. So this creates like a nub. Okay, and so now we chain three again. So one, two, and three. And now in the next, we want to skip the next uh, chain space. So we want to skip this one here, go to the second over, and we want to do the five cluster. Pinch down, push down here, and we want to do a five cluster right in that space. So we're going to just keep grabbing. So grab through and just keep collecting your stitches. So it's like doing a first portion of your double crochet. And we want a total of six loops on your hook. Okay, so we have, uh, what do we have? Five right now. So we have to do one more. So as soon as you see there's six, you know it's ready to go. So pull it through and now it says to chain three again. So one, two, and three. Okay, and it's simply we're gonna do a pico. So just pinch right underneath one, two, and three. The yarn is just changed again. Going to the one right above where you're pinching, grabbing the yarn, pulling it through and through, creates another nub, and then one, two, and three. So again, coming back down, we skip the next one here. This is gonna be the final time I show it. So wrap, going through, pull through, and we wanna do that continuously until we get six loops back on your hook. It's really quite a no brainer. So this absorbs quite a bit of yarn just so that you're aware of that as well. And so you get six, pull through, and then one, two, and three, another pico, one, two, and three, right above, through and through to create a nub, one, two, and three, skip the next one, come there, and you do this all the way across, even through the center of the back, you don't worry about it, just keep going and skipping over until you get it all the way through, and voila, your trim would be done. Thank you for joining me today on behalf of redheart.com. It is my pleasure to serve you today, and if you have any further comments or ideas, please share with us on our Facebook and redheart.com, as well as the Crochet Crowd. And until next time, have a fabulous day, and good luck with your top-down shop.